Hi, I'm Lucy Lacanienta, Research Assistant for the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and today I'm here with Dr. Timothy Ferrant. Um, Timothy Ferrant is a postdoctoral fellow in religion at the Neil A. Maxwell Institute for Religious Studies, and he has developed his research interests and studies in medieval cultural history, theology, and pastoral studies. Our artwork today is a drawing by Kayla Williams, a contemporary artist entitled The Angel Appears to Alma the Younger and the Sons of Mosiah. This piece is ink on paper produced in 2019, and we'll pair it with Mosiah chapters 25 through 28 today. So first off, can you talk to us about how this artwork interprets the scriptures that it's based on? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Um, I'm not an expert in, in Latter-day Saint art by, by any stretch, but um, I really enjoyed sort of interacting and thinking about this particular piece of um, artwork. And I think, for me, it um, interprets the art in sort of, uh, uh, or there's an interpretation of the art which is just a traditional reading of the scripture, right? Mm -hmm. So the sons of Mosiah and Alma the Younger are going about seeking to destroy the church and the relationships um, that they have with other sort of church members are um, fractured and sort of in tension. And then this is their road to Damascus experience. And so as they're traveling one day, a messenger of the Lord appears to them and stops them in their tracks and they, they you know, are unable to speak and unable to move and this becomes a basis of a, of a conversion narrative mm -hmm. that features quite prominently, not only in the chapters that follow, but also later in, um, in the Book of Alma. Fantastic. So in Mosiah 27, 15, we have this verse that, um, where an angel asks Alma and the sons of Mosiah, can you dispute the power of God? How do we see Williams depicting the power of God in this piece? Um, or how do we see God's power manifested in other ways in the story? Yeah, um, that's, that's a great, I think that's a great question. Um, first of all, um, I'm not much of a, um, a critic of art, but I see sort of the use of light, right? Mm -hmm. And this is something that we had a conversation earlier and you mentioned um, the sort of striking contrast between this heavenly figure and the, the very human figures beneath. Yeah. I think it is actually remarkable the way in which uh, Caleb Will Williams has managed to use um, ink in order to bring out light on the page mm -hmm. and it's sort of the reverse of what I would have, I would have expected um, from a traditional sort of piece of artwork that's on a canvas where you're working when the canvas is white right and then you're working in order to sort of use colors in an interesting way in order to bring out uh, mm -hmm. sort of the brightness of a piece and then this is starting on sort of this brown canvas and then um, trying to lay sort of light on top of, of what's already there and I think that that's that's actually quite remarkable and so in in a certain way you have the the form of the cross and then you have the, the sort of height of the trees um, compared to sort of the lower foliage surrounding the humans and then this draws a sort of contrast between these uh, human beings and the heavenly beings and then is is able to convey a sense of power right mm -hmm. but I think for me the piece really speaks um, it really communicates the power of God and really speaks um, about the surrounding verses of scripture yeah. that maybe aren't depicted here. And I think back actually to um, Alma chapter, um, no, sorry, Mosiah chapter 18, mm -hmm. where um, these sort of early converts are first introduced into the waters of baptism and they, they covenant and commit with one another to... Yeah. Um, to always mourn with those that mourn and comfort those that stand in need of comfort. And, and you have all of these communities, so um, the people of Nephi and the people of Zarahemla and the sort of pre preceding chapters running up to this, actually embodying this love in a remarkable way, mm -hmm. in the way that they interact with one another. And then the um, sons of Mosiah and Alma the Younger, I see sort of disrupt this, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they cause tension and fracture with sort of within the community and and yet what happens after the conversion is that they begin to beautifully embody this and so I see that the way that they interact and relate with humans before the episode and then the way that they interact and relate with humans after the episode is what for me beautifully um, embodies the power and love of God or the power of God's love sort yeah. of manifest in human interactions. That's beautiful, that sort of miracle of the atonement and the healing that comes through it as someone changes their heart. I think we also see the power of God as 
the angel tells them that the Lord has heard the prayers of his servant Alma, who is thy father, and we see like the prayers of Alma being answered through this conversion of his son mm -hmm. as well. Can you contextualize um, this artwork within the larger tradition of LDS theology and art, um, and perhaps what does it teach us about the way that Latter-day Saints believe that those in this world and that of the divine can interact? Oh, that's a, that's a big question, and it's a fantastic question. Um, so the first thing that I found quite striking was the fact that this particular um, piece of art was sketched on like this notepad, and you mm -hmm. see sort of the the binding like uh, on the side and and the sort of the quality and texture of the paper, yeah. right? Um, and I immediately started thinking about um, Letter Book One, which was sort of produced in eighteen thirty two, and it's Joseph Smith's first attempt to to try and um, capture the first vision narrative. Okay. And in letter book one, uh, Joseph Smith says that his initial desire in sort of pouring his heart out to God was to try and find some sort of mercy. Mm -hmm. He feels convicted by his, his, uh, the way that he lives his life and sort of, uh, you know, his own personal sins. And he wants to find redemption from that. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, I think, is, is a beautiful way of capturing um, the sense in which Latter-day Saints try to relate to God or to relate to the other world, right? So we carry around our personal journals, right? We're reading mm -hmm. um, scriptures, we're reflecting on um, maybe interactions that we've had um, with others um, and, and, and also with God. And, and I think that this is a beautiful way of trying to capture that moment, right? To try and capture it. And so there's something really personal about it. And I think that that speaks volumes to... Um, the way that Latter-day Saints not only conceive of themselves, but also the way that they journey with God in their personal lives and mm -hmm. this sense of wanting to begin anew, right, and recording this uh, uh, for, for sort of individual purposes. That's beautiful. Thanks. Can you share your personal reaction to this art piece and to the scriptures we've talked about today? Uh, yeah, I, so I think a lot about what it means to live a Christian life. Right, and so all of the texts that I read are written by devout individuals, right, that want to embody a sense of Christianity in the world as they interact with others. And, and I think that uh, for me personally, this, this artwork is just um, a string of many a human attempts to try and etch on paper with ink um, what it might mean to be Christian, what it might mean to, to have a transformative experience, what it might mm -hmm. mean to, to relate rightly uh, with others in the world, and what it might mean for God to intervene in the very sort of intricacies of our, of our human lives. And, um, and for that reason, I think that um, this art, piece of artwork by Caleb Williams has sort of opened my eyes to sort of possibilities in Latter-day Saint art mm -hmm. and, and, and sparked my interest in, in wanting to explore um, not only the, the Book of Mormon art catalogue um, in greater depth, but, but also um, the curious work that Latter-day Saint artists continue to, to sort of create 